these spots, all dragonflies have these. These are called stigma. We've got the four spots there, four spotted skimmer. Okay. This is a, and then we will disperse around near the water and try to gather up our, our data, all right? Um, I think people find it a lot more interesting than being in class and just learning about it because um, you get hands-on experience and and you get to know like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work and usually when you learn about things you only learn about the things that work. Not every day is going to be a day where you're going to find a bunch of dragonflies and damselflies. So as you can see, is the weather conducive for dragonflies? Yes. What's missing? I mean, like sun. 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 What else? Heat. Warmth. No wind. And no wind. Yep. So, does this mean we have epic failure? No. Yeah. No. no. It means that we need to come out and collect again, right? Yeah. You know, we always look forward to these days where we get to go out and actually do hands-on activities like dragonfly hunting, and it's just it's exciting and it's fun. See anything in it? And I dumped it out. And then I caught it. <gasps> you got a damsel! Woo! Yeah. Okay, so male or female? That looks like a female. That looks it like is. female. Yeah. Yes. Okay, awesome. so you can get your sleeve. So he's big, so put him in feet first. Yeah. Seeing that their information is going to be used by scientists, they're very <laughs> serious about it. They have their hand lenses, they're able to determine the sex of the dragonflies, they're able to key them out to figure out, you know, what group they belong to. So then, do you see a stripe? It's, it's neat to see that they even police each other on getting accurate yeah, that's, results. That's male. That is a male, male dragonfly. Sweet. We went out and we are observing the migratory dragonflies and we recorded on the data sheet that was given to us through Odonata Central of the five migratory dragonflies and we went out for a period of say 20 to 25 minutes and the kids recorded their results. Citizen science is really important to my work. In addition to inspiring me to become a scientist, I use the help of many citizen scientists in the surveying work that I participate in. We're looking to see which species live where. Scientific research involves a lot of collaboration. Kurt Mead is a dragonfly expert, state park interpretive naturalist, and is the person that created Minnesota's Dragonfly Citizen Science Program. He's also my mentor and friend. I started as a citizen scientist, and through Kurt's mentorship and support, I began to develop my own research questions, and I'm now working towards earning my PhD. This one's called the four-spotted skimmer, and the spots we're talking about are here, here, there, and there on the same side. Uh, these spots, all dragonflies have these. These are called stigma. Yeah, you can see it breathing. It's got dozens of little holes up and down the bottom of the abdomen, and it's actually inhaling and exhaling. A bog can be a challenging place to, to do research. Um, one reason I think you can see them flying all around me are the black flies and the deer flies. Um, that's why I'm wearing a scarf protecting my ears and my neck and I wear a hat and long sleeves that's pretty good for protecting me from the flies. So dragonflies spend most of their lives underwater as aquatic nymphs. And I like to look in these small ponds in the bogs using an aquatic net to see if I can't swoop up some of the baby nymphs and see where they are and how old they are. So I'm gonna try and see if I can't find one right now using this net. So I kind of dip it in the water and I shake it a little bit as I move it along the bottom. And then I can set my net down and pick through it and see if I can find any nymphs. They're really hard to find in the bog. Here's a very, very, very tiny one. <laughs> this is a baby dragonfly. In the winter, my team and I cut a hole in the ice to find nymphs. 
By studying dragonflies year-round, we learn about how baby dragonflies survive in both winter and summer. Our hands may get cold, but at least there are no flies biting us in the winter. So how we can start identifying this a lot of them have these bright emerald green eyes, not all of them do, but there's very few other species that have this emerald green metallic markings. And then here's the kicker, but everything in the emerald family has got this little yellow band right there. So this one is the American emerald. Not only are the kids that are involved in citizen science participating to learn and to have fun, but they're really helping us researchers. There's no way that the handful of researchers could gather all of the information and the knowledge without the help of citizen scientists. No and doubt. when I work with school groups and families, the absolute best catchers of the difficult to catch dragonflies are always the kids. Sort of the athleticism and the reckless abandon of kids <laughs> with nets uh, leads to their success. A um, bunch of 14, 15, 16 year old kids out with a net and nothing's going to get away. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll find it all. Yeah. I don't usually call it work, I usually call it play. It is play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.